tired of the tantrums? Let's talk about how to stop tantrums forever. This stuff really works. I'll give you three easy steps. Understanding a little bit of child psychology will get us started on eliminating the tantrums forever. And then I'll get you into three specific steps that you can apply immediately. I'm curious to see how this is going to work for you. One of the most important things to understand first about child psychology in the context of these tantrums is that children have a very difficult time regulating their emotions. In fact, developmentally, they are not equipped to regulate their emotions. Yeah, that comes with maturity and with age, with neurological development. And so if you right. can remember that, it takes some of the pressure off you expecting them to be what they aren't able yet to be. This happens especially with first mm -hmm. children. Yeah, because we don't realize how long it might take for yeah. them to mature into things. You don't have the norms in your head yeah. yet. But it, let us reassure you that tantrums or emotional overload is very, very common for children. Now, there's some things we can do. We're going to get to those three steps right. that we promised you. But just but first understand. recognize that it is part of their development. Right that they don't regulate super well. A normal part of their development. Mm -hmm. Now, with that in mind, let's not allow their emotional dysregulation to tip us over, okay? <laughs> it's very important to remain the adult in this case. It's almost funny sometimes when you see adults losing their cool with their kids. The kid's this big, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't feel funny in the moment. No. <laughs> No, I said to watch it, <laughs> um, but it's not fun to be in that. Let's do what we need to, to take care of our own emotional state so that we don't get pushed into that. We've got other videos to help you with that. Just take a moment to queue up one of those videos for yeah. your next view if you want to. You can, you can do that right up here in the corner. Click on that card, it'll queue it up for you so you can watch it. Even though it's pretty normal for kids to not have a very good regulation of their emotions, it can become problematic. And this is where it can tip us over as parents because it's inconvenient or it's loud or it's embarrassing or it's happening in a public place. Actually, it works better for the child if it's inconvenient or embarrassing or in a public place. Why? Well, let's get down to the reasons why they're doing this in the first place. Typically, a tantrum has one of two main objectives. And the first one is to gain attention from the parent or from some other person in their environment. Okay, to gain attention. That's one objective. The other objective is to obtain something that they would have a hard time obtaining without the tantrum like a treat or a preferred toy or something that they're throwing the tantrum about. Quite frankly, the best way to stop tantrums is to take away whatever the payoff is for that tantrum right. and provide an alternative that's socially appropriate and something that is more acceptable to you as a parent. So with that in mind, let's go into three specific steps that you can apply. And I want you to just practice these, okay? Try something a little different from what you've done in the past. And it really has to start with consequences. Mm, definitely. When the tantrum occurs, we want to have that consequence be pretty immediate. And yeah. so it, it, it goes along with wherever their emotional immaturity is at. Well, and by immediate, you want to interrupt the tantrum. Right. Mm -hmm. with the consequence. So by immediate, we're talking right. in the moment as it's occurring, that's when we're going to jump in with the consequence. Now we're talking about toddlers here with right. the tantrum. If you've got a tantrum with a teenager, we need to hook you up with <laughs> some other- There's a whole different conversation. Yeah, we got some other <laughs> stuff available for you. It's especially at Live On Purpose Central in our positive parenting right. courses. But let's go back to the toddler. So it needs to be immediate. Mm -hmm. It interrupts the consequence. And the most effective way to do this is through isolation. Most of us call it time out. Right. And it's, it needs to be delivered in kind of a dispassionate, robotic way. Just simply removing, right. moving the child, putting them in an isolated situation. And you're not emotionally charged. You're not telling them all the reasons that they're getting in trouble. 
right no. at the moment. You're just simply disrupting the tantrum. This is not the time for a lecture. And <laughs> your child, as a toddler, they're not equipped to handle or process a lecture anyway. Mm -mm. So you grab their little hand and you lead them away from the center of activity. It has to be isolated. For timeout to be effective, it needs to be in a room where the other things aren't going on, where they will be isolated and separated from all of that activity. So you march them in there, and it, like you said, kind of robotic, mm -hmm. dispassionate. We're going to remove all the emotion from the discipline. This is important for you as a parent to keep your cool, right. but it also makes the discipline more effective mm -hmm. because it shows that you as the adult are in control. Now, it doesn't have to be a timeout. There's another consequence that we've talked about here on the channel before called response cost. Okay, yeah. And this is where if you've got a lot of issues going on with this, mm -hmm. you can get a little Ziploc bag or something, you know, the little clear plastic yeah. bags. Put several things in that the kiddo likes and then you seal it up. That becomes their consequence when the tantrum occurs you can reach in very quickly and it needs to be brief but businesslike. You mm -hmm. reach in very quickly, you take one of those out, you seal it back up it, and that one becomes yours. And you don't need to do any big talking about it. No. <laughs> you, just, you just do it businesslike and yep. you move on. Brief and businesslike, robotic, consistent, either isolation or a response cost. Let's use a good consequence quickly in the moment to interrupt that behavior. So let's, let's talk about the second step right. that we wanted to get to today. And I'm calling this situational planning, <laughs> but it has to do with giving your kids a heads up to what's going on. In fact, as we were talking about the consequences, Vicki. Right. When we talked about the little cost response where they had a baggie of something that they wanted, right? Yeah. Uh, we want to, to set it up ahead of time. Maybe you know, you kind of know whenever you go to Smith's after after four o'clock, they throw a fit, right? right? So you want some sort of a, a situational planning you're going to see before. If we get all the way through the store, at the um, when you get out of the store, you get this baggie full of treats. Right. If there's going to be a tantrum, that's okay. That's okay. You just I'll just take it'll some just of those cost until, you one. Yeah. Now this works so better with a little older right toddlers that they can, they can process that mm -hmm. for the littles. The isolation and the timeout it's works really better. It's really the easiest and best way. And going back to the grocery store example, sometimes we don't intervene right then because we're busy doing our thing, right? Mm -hmm. Well, if it becomes an issue or a recurring problem, you may want to sacrifice your shopping to address the behavior so that right. we don't have to deal with this every time you go to the store. So for situational planning, if you can anticipate it, give your child a heads up and also watch for the cues, watch for the signs that it's mm -hmm. coming. Sometimes you, you see the uh, storm gathering, right? <laughs> definitely, definitely see it. And that might be a time to do a distraction. Mm -hmm. Let me give you an example of what I mean. Uh, you've got a, a, a small child or a toddler who you can see is about to lose their cool, mm -hmm. okay, for whatever situation is going on. And you quickly jump up and you run over to the window and you say, wow, look at those cars out there. <laughs> so you've just a redirect. And they're like, huh? What cars? I want to see the cars. <laughs> they always talk about redirects in magic tricks. This is kind of your own magic trick. Do a, do a redirect yeah. as you start to see things. You, you know your kid. You can read their cues. Just get to the point where you read them and give a little distraction. Do a little intervention there. Mm -hmm to prevent the tantrum from occurring in the first place. Mm -hmm. This requires a little bit of thinking, a little bit of monitoring on your part. If you miss that, then you go back to what we talked about in step one. You do a quick, robotic, consistent consequence for the tantrum and wait till they calm down to bring them out of the isolation, mm -hmm. okay? They're gonna be demanding, let me out of here. Well, that's <laughs> not how they're gonna get out. Okay, so you wait and you wait and you wait. And when they calm down, you open the door and then they start in again. You close the door again. Wait, <laughs> wait, wait until they calm down. And then you bring them back out. This is the one you like, right? The next one? Yeah, it has the word positive well, in it. <laughs> yeah, well, you think about why kids are throwing the tantrums, mm -hmm. okay? It's usually to get something, to get something. that they want. 
And the reason they keep doing it is because it works. Mm -hmm. All right, honestly. And we have to really take a look at ourselves and see, oh, am I really giving them attention only when they're throwing the tantrums? Mm -hmm. Well, part of the remedy for that is to come up with frequent interactions with your child where you're giving them positive, it can be brief, okay? But oh, yeah, brief, definitely. positive attention. It's almost like you become the super sleuth to try to catch your child and all the good things and you get good right. at commenting about it. And it doesn't even have to be do something they're doing. No. You might just suddenly take all your attention off of whatever you're doing, get down on their level and say, oh, you're wearing your yellow shoes today. <laughs> or it could, it could even just be just commenting on them or being with them or playing or smiling with them. Right. Or... The key is contact, okay? Mm -hmm. Get connected to them in a positive way and you can go over the top a little bit. I'm good at this, right? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> but um, enhance it or embellish it in a way that is really engaging for that child. The more you can connect in positive ways consistently throughout the day, the more you're going to be able to avoid those tantrums. Mm -hmm. And you're showing that child that they can get positive attention from you at times that are not even connected to whatever the tantrum was about. Right. Parenting is not one of those things that you want to do yourself. It's kind of like dentistry or brain surgery. Don't do this yourself. Get the help that you need and the support that's available to you through resources like Live on Purpose Central. We have an entire positive parenting area there where you can get the tools that you need to do this well. Go.liveonpurposecentral.com. Come see what's available for you. I wish I'd had